Hi there, I'm here today to talk about the feeder in your Evo Hot End. Now what I have here is an updated one-piece feeder design. It contains two tubes that help feed the filament past the hob and into the hot end in your machine. Now we've updated this piece several times at Airwolf and I'm going to show you how to quickly put this piece on your printer so you can have optimal performance. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why you might want to replace the feeder in your Evo. The new one-piece design is easy to install, the feeding is very accurate, and you can install special versions of this feeder just for printing materials like nylon and TPU. So what we're going to talk about right now is how you get this feeder onto the hot end of your Evo machine. Now the first thing that we'll do is turn the machine on. Now I'll remind you, when you work on your Evo, you always want to have the power off. But what we're going to do is we're going to set the hot end up into service mode so we can easily access the components and then we're going to power down the machine. So you notice right now when we start up the Evo, it always goes through the homing sequence. So now we're homing the X, then the Y, then we'll home the Z. Okay, with the machine and home, let's put the head in service position. To change the feeder, if we didn't have any filament in the machine, we could start right now. We could power down the machine and just take the housing off and replace the feeder. But if we do have filament in the machine, what you're going to want to do is preheat the hot end to the last material you're using. And then you're going to want to remove that filament out of the feeder. What I'll talk about later is removing this feeder when filament is inside of it can be very difficult. It's possible, but it can be difficult. So let's first check to see if we have filament in the hot end. If we don't, it's clear, so we're ready to go. With the housing in the correct position, we're going to turn off the printer. Now it's important that you turn off the printer. You never want to work on the machine while it's on. Uh, a lot of things could happen, you could damage the machine, and it's generally advisable to have everything off. Now sometimes when we replace things like nozzles and whatnot, we want the hot end to maybe warm, but we shut the machine off before we actually work on it. So with the machine off and our fan housing hot end in the correct position, let's go ahead and first take off the fan cover. Another reason why you want the machine off is the fan that cools the hot end down is always on, at least when it's over 60 degrees in the chamber. And if you would accidentally put the screwdriver in there, you may damage the fan. So here we go, machine off, fan not running. We're going to take this two and a half millimeter Allen and remove both, or loosen I should say, both M3s. Now there's only two bolts that hold the fan cover onto the hot end. You'll notice here's one right there and the other one's still in there. So with the fan cover down like this, it'll actually be suspended by the wires, which is okay. If you did want to remove the fan cover, you can unplug the connector here. But for now, there's no need to because we're not going to be accessing this part of the hot end. What we're concerned about is the feeder up top. So you'll notice it has four bolts in it. Those are two M3 by 18s and two M3 by 25s. If you're upgrading your feeder from an old design to the newer version, you will need those updated bolts. So we have four bolts in here. We'll unscrew each one of them completely. And it's okay if they stay in the housing. And this shouldn't take more than a minute or so. Once these are all unscrewed, the feeder should actually pull off easily from the housing. Now, if you are in a situation where your filament is stuck in the feeder, it won't be that easy. What you will want to do is take a razor blade and you'll want to insert that razor blade in between the feeder and the top of the hot end here. What that'll do is that razor blade will end up cutting us the filament so that you can then remove the feeder. It may be a little difficult, and if you damage the feeder in the process, uh, it's not the end of the world. We can always send you a replacement. So here we go. I have loosened all the bolts, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the feeder here. 
Now it may take a little wiggling because things do tend to be tight in here, especially on the newer machines like this one. And we've got a little filament in there, but there is the old feeder. And this one specifically is designed for ABS, polycarbonate, and PLA. You can tell because the instructions are written on the top of it. So I will replace that feeder with this other one I have in my hand. This particular one is for a 1.75 millimeter filament and we'll be talking about this a little bit later with our 1.75 upgrade. But for now I'll just show you how it goes on. We'll put the 25 millimeter bolts in the bottom, the 18s in the top, and clean off any debris from the hot end that is in here. Slide the new feeder on. Now the most important part of this feeder uh, upgrade is to make sure all the bolts are adequately tight. The bottom of the feeder needs to be correctly aligned with uh, the, the hot end components. If it's not, the filament as it comes down that path can actually hit the top of the metal portion of the hot end right here. So what we're gonna do is snug up all four bolts. Now, we're gonna snug them up slightly, one, then the other, then the other, and then the last. Once they're all snug, let's go ahead and tighten them all the way. Now this is a polycarbonate feeder, so it's very strong. You shouldn't have to worry about breaking this. What you do wanna make sure that is when you tighten this feeder housing up, that the front of the feeder lines up smoothly with the front of the metal component of the hot end right here. They should be in alignment. That's how the hot end has been designed. Now once you've got it all lined up and tight, you can go ahead and put the fan cover back on. And it's as simple as snapping it on and tightening up our two bolts. Again, make sure that you tighten these bolts while the machine is off so you don't accidentally put the Allen driver inside the fan. And there we go. Now our machine has an upgraded feeder and it's ready to print.